Horror has its many subgenres. Some of these have been popular phases which have come and gone and sometimes come back again. In the 2000s and early 2010s, horror saw, no pun intended, an ultraviolent sadistic subgenre splatter onto cinema screens. At the height of this torture porn phenomenon, a horror musical arose with a low budget, an interestingly international cast, and a crazy concept. This is 2008's Repo the Genetic Opera. In Repo, we enter a dystopian future where organ failure has become the norm, and the mega conglomerate Genco, ruled over by Rotti Lago, Paul Sorvino, offers organ transplants on payment plans. However, if customers do not pay their debts, Rotti sends the Repo man to collect the organ. Gruesome! Rotti's three children are also vying for control of their father's company and have some strange and sadistic obsessions of their own. Luigi, Bill Mosley, is a violent sex maniac. Parvi, Ogre, wears others' faces, and Amber, Paris Hilton, has an addiction to surgery and the drug Zydrate. Elsewhere in the city, the young Shiloh, Alex Panavega, has a life-threatening disease which permits her from leaving her room. Shiloh's widowed father, Nathan, Anthony Head, keeps her sheltered from the dangerous world outside and the many secrets she may discover, the biggest one being that he is actually the elusive Repo Man, and working for Rotti in a game involving much guilt and manipulation. Shiloh admires music superstar Blind Mag, Sarah Brightman, but Roddy has very sinister plans for Mag and her projecting blind eyes. Repo the Genetic Opera chases a very niche crowd. The squeamish need not apply as the violence is really in your face and quite visceral. But people who can handle that and also love musicals or horror will find something to love here for sure. Terence Sadunich, who here plays the central narrator and Zydrate dealer Grave Robber, conceived the musical in the early 2000s as the Necro Merchant's Debt and toured it as a stage show until it caught the attention of director Darren Lynn Bousman, who by 2008 had had a few of the popular Saw sequels under his belt. Sadunich, Bousman, and co-writer Darren Smith present a dark future with hints of Blade Runner, but also play a twisted satire in referencing people's obsession with beauty and youth whilst also conveying a gothic reality with dangerous undercurrents and peculiar characters. To play these characters and belt out the many varied tunes is an impressive cast. The vocal talents in particular of Anthony Head, Paul Sorvino and the amazing Sarah Brightman are the standouts. All three are classically trained performers on stage and screen and add a powerful addition to the film as Nathan, Rotti and Blind Mag. Anthony Head's rendition of Genetic Assassin is a powerful segue into the story's biggest conflict and his character's Jekyll and Hyde transitions between Nathan and the Repo Man. It's a slick rock ballad and Head absolutely sells it with his commitment to the character. Blind Mag songs in Repo like the electro-operatic Chase the Morning and the more classically beautiful opera track Cremagia are beautifully sung by Sarah Brightman. I listened to Brightman a lot growing up thanks to my parents' interest in the musicals of Andrew Lloyd Webber, so I was thrilled to see her in this and she's great. Alexa Panavega also belts out a couple of tunes herself. The opening ballad, Infected, is where she shows some impressive vocal range. Repo is, after all, an opera. There's a total of 58 songs in the film, in fact. So there's a lot of sung dialogue and collaborative performances by the cast. Some standouts include the hilariously crude Mark It Up with the Largo Kids, Night Surgeon, sung by Anthony Head, and a strong third act bop called We Started This Opera Shit, featuring the majority of the cast. My favourite musical moment from Repo is from its creator, Tara Sadunich, in the form of Zydrate Anatomy. Paris Hilton's Amber even has a verse, and despite lots of flack she gets for her acting and her singing, I really feel she holds her own here, and the film in general. But then again, she is playing a spell terrorist. Not a huge stretch. Zydrate Anatomy has a memorable beat and hook. After watching the movie, you will probably start randomly saying, Zydrek comes in a little glass vial. These interesting musical interludes don't all hit the mark, but they mostly complement the macabre moments well and really give the cast opportunities to ham it up or flex their vocals brilliantly. Repo had a relatively small US $8.5 million budget. The production saved money in different areas. Certain action scenes, build up, and scene breaks with comic book style artwork actually is quite stylish and effective. Paris Hilton wore most of her own outfits for Amber and lent other outfits of hers to the support group members. Paris allegedly had so much faith in the film that when it went over budget by $50,000 and production was threatened with being halted, she made a paid appearance at a nightclub to cover the cost. Anthony Head landed the part of Nathan after director Darren Lynn Bousman had heard his talented singing voice in the TV series Buffy. 
Primarily its well-known musical episode titled Once More With Feeling, Head had many singing credits to his name, including playing Frankenfurter in a West End production of the Rocky Horror Show. Sarah Brightman, an esteemed stage icon in her own right, made her film debut in Repo after many years of performing on stage. Her presence here most definitely elevates the film further for me. The film was released to limited cinemas in 2008, ultimately making $188,000 worldwide. Although there seems to be very little information outside its initial box office earnings, reports indicate that Repo made a decent return on home media and streaming, and has become somewhat of a cult movie, with fans attending regular midnight screenings of the film to this day. I remember being pretty excited for this film when I first saw promotional material back in 2007. I mean, it's no secret that I'm a musical and horror fan, so I'm the perfect audience for this kind of thing, and I wasn't disappointed when I saw it. Hilariously, two years later in 2010, a film called Repo Man, starring Jude Law and Forrest Whitaker, was released, and shares a very similar plot to the genetic opera surrounding repossessing organs. While I have never seen, nor have much desire to see Repo Man, it definitely created an uproar amongst genetic opera fans who claim to plagiarise the operatic film without the opera. No legal proceedings have ever arisen from this bizarre coincidence. So I would say if you think you fit into a similar niche, or if you're just curious to see a violent rock opera with a varied cast of characters, including Paris Hilton, then give this film a look, and let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Road to Nowhere Films for more content. And until next time, I don't take lip from a...